I'm making this recording for my son and Jacob and my daughter Jasmine because uh, they originally heard this story from their uncle, my brother Donald. And uh, but he ain't here and he ain't telling the story about the first time they put me on an alligator to catch by hand on the Kissimmee River. My son Jacob said, Dad, you got to tell these stories. You got to put them down on video so people know. Because I, I want my kids to hear these stories. I said, okay, Jacob. So, when I was in high school, I joined the Army on the delayed entry program. I served overseas in Italy for three years. Came, you know, airborne. <laughs> Really badass, you know. I could run two miles in 11 minutes, 13 seconds. All four years I was in the Army. 14 minutes carrying my M60 machine gun, serial number Romeo 579. I love that gun. Well, first 5,000 made, so I had to uh, barrel change lever instead of that stupid push pin. It's hard to do with the asbestos glove on. But anyway, uh, so I got out of the Army and... When I had joined the Army, my family was living in Indiana. So now they're living out in nowhere, Florida. My dad's driving a semi-truck, and that's where he wants to retire at. That's what he wants to do is live out there in the middle of nowhere, not bother anybody, and not be bothered. That's all he wants. That's cool. So consequently, when you're living in a little town called Loretta, Florida, and you just come back from overseas where, you know, Io in Italy for three years. Io parlo italiano molto bene. On case for a kid to do a check line, was all upon all games. Plus, you know, airborne jumping out of helicopters, airplanes, whatever. They wanted me to jump out. We'll jump out of it. Whatever. Causing mischief and mayhem across Africa and the Middle East, you know. Getting out. Peak physical shape. You know, full of testosterone, piss and vinegar. But I don't know anything about living in central Florida. This is 30 miles northwest of Okeechobee on Highway 98. <laughs> this is the Kissimmee River, which back then was a straight canal because the Army Corps engineers back in the 60s had dug a straight canal, drained the land. So uh, they found out that was a mistake later on. So that's a... Dredge Canal, which is pretty dang deep. I don't know. I, so, we'll get that later. So, uh, there's not a lot to do out in Lareda, Florida for entertainment. Because you're out in the middle of nowhere, Florida. I mean, you look this way, you see scrub brush. North, south, east, west, it's all scrub brush. And uh, you got cattle ranches and orange groves. That's it. Entertainment, you got armadillos, quail, rattlesnakes, cottonmouths, coral snakes, king snakes, black snakes, uh, scorpions, spiders. There's all sorts of fun things to play with out there in the woods. I mean, most of the eastern diamondbacks I ever saw around Laredo, Florida were usually between 5'11", and 6'4", out there around my dad's property. But that's also, you know, going to Arbuckle Creek or the Kissimmee River. So anyway, my brother's introduced me around. I just got back from, you know, I'm fresh out of the Army. I'm a block mason's helper, so I'm carrying uh, two 37-pound blocks and stacking them up on scaffolding, mixing mortar and stuff like that, keeping busy. You know, hustling, heavy work, lifting, out in the sun, getting tanned. Peak physical shape. And uh, so my brother, he takes me out. He sets me out. That's what he did, some bitch. So him and his uh, buddy. Now his buddy owns this uh, uh, fish camp trailer park down on the Kissimmee River. And what his dad had done up on a hill was parked the trailer, put a hill up where they took the digging the canal. He took that fill, that coral rock, and he made a hill. 
and he put his mobile home on top of it. Then he built a house with a basement out of the mobile home. So now he's got this uh, semi-mansion up there. <laughs> but he pays taxes for a trailer. <laughs> he's a sharp old guy. <laughs> so anyway, he's grandfathered in so they couldn't touch him. But uh, so anyway, his son, who I'm going to call Homie Boy, which it's kind of what his name is. So Homie Boy is this wild Steve Irwin character, Tarzan, you know, like Sandy Blant, brown hair Tarzan motherfucker on, you know, the wilds of Florida. <laughs> I had long hair down to the middle of his back too. Me, I'm brushed out of the military, so mine's short, high and tight. So anyway, uh, my brother's telling me this guy's an expert, alligators and all that, and I'm new to Florida, so I want to learn about these alligators because they're all around the place, and I don't know anything, so they're going to teach me about them. So, okay, I'm game. Whatever. I ain't scared. If you can do it, I can do it. That's my attitude. Can do. Let's get her done. Tap, improvise, overcome. So, whoa. so here we are, out on the Kissimmee River, about a quarter mile north of Highway 98 Bridge got, that goes into Okeechobee. It's about, I don't know, about six miles, eight miles north of Lake Okeechobee, the big lake there in the center of the state. Yeah, back, you know, back in the 80s, there wasn't shit out there. It was desolate boondocks <laughs> so here we are there at three o'clock in the morning and we're i'm drunk we're drunk okay and that was part of the setup because they were build, building me up you know how easy it is and he's you know telling me what how you do it and uh he goes i'll do it first and i'll show you how it's done so pay attention because you only get one shot this is the wild I said, okay, so, uh, and uh, he's got pictures all in their uh, basement uh, pool rec room with the pinball machines and everything, and so anyway, we're out there on the river, and I'm holding the light, and he says, shot, there he is, and I see a gator for the first time at night, them black, those eyes, they, they shine at you when you put a spotlight on them landing craft aircraft landing bulb light on them they shine like laser pointers right back at you just like this gator that's looking at you in this picture that's exactly except for really bright like devil fire you know but the gator's blind he can't see that's what your advantage is so uh anyhow Usually, the gators you jump on top of like this are like between four to maybe seven foot long, but usually not that big. Usually about four or five foot. And what you do is you run down the bank while your buddies are in the boat distracting the gator. The gator's paying attention to that light because he, he can't see and he hears the noise and he's curious. So he's focused on that beam. And what you, you do is you run down the bank and then you just Tarzan and you jump on that sucker and you put your arm around him, get him in a headlock and you take your, you know, if you're, me, I'm right-handed. So I put him in a headlock with my right arm and then I run my left hand down to the end of his snout and then wrap your legs around his body and you break it over. You break a snout down to, to his belly. Now you got control of the gator. Now they come up in the boat and grab a hold of you, and you just pass the gator up in the boat. Simple, right? <laughs> Fuckers. So anyway, so I'm sitting there holding a lot. Homesy, homie boy, he jumps out on the bank, and we go back to the spot, and there's the gator, and I'm holding the light. He goes, yep, that's the one I'm going to get. He says, now watch how I do it, Al. I said, okay, homie. And he runs down there, he jumps on there, whoosh, 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 doom, bam, he's got him in a headlock, got that snout down, got his legs wrapped around, we come right up there, my brother grabs a hold of him, grabs that gator, brings him in the boat, tapes him up, we tape his legs, tape his snout, everything, done. He goes, okay, Al, 
it's your turn. You're you ready? I said, hell yeah, I'm ready. I'm raring to go. It's like, you know, you're jumping out of an airplane. They're, you know, half the load's already left and you're getting ready. You're getting hyped up, you know. You don't want to look bad in front of everybody. So, uh, he goes, okay, we're going to get you one. He goes, okay, I got one here for you. He goes, go ahead, get it, Sam. I said, yeah, yeah, Sam. Okay, uh, you sure? Yeah, yeah, Al, that's a great gator for you. Here, get up there on the bank, go. Okay, and so they pulled over there and they're shining the light in this gator's eyes. And I come, you know, stalking down the bank. And all of a sudden I run and I jump and I land on that gator and I put my arm around him. And I thought to myself, you motherfuckers, that son of a bitchy gator was as big as a goddamn station wagon. <laughs> that motherfucker. <laughs> as scared as I was a bit, that damn gator didn't expect something like me to jump on his damn back out of the clear blue. I scared the holy shit out of that gator. And he went down for the bottom of that Kissimmee River Canal. I'm lucky I didn't bust my damn eardrum. My eardrum were, were hurting. And I've been scuba diving since 1973. I was hurting. I couldn't let, I finally let go of him and kicked away from that son of a bitch while he, he was still torpedoing away. And I come up out of the water and I, I'm choking because I swallowed some air or wa uh, water in my lungs. I'm, I, 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 I splash around, finally get my bearing. I swim to shore real fast. I get up on the back. I'm, yeah. And I, it, it took me, it was sun up. And I had to promise that I wouldn't beat the holy hell out of both of them motherfuckers for what they had done to me. That motherfucking alligator they put me on was about 14 to 16 foot long. I'm only 5 foot 6. <laughs> the only thing they saved my ass that night is I scared the shit out of that gator every bit as much as he scared the shit out of me. And that's the first time I went catching alligators on the Kissimmee River. Now, everybody in Laredo has heard that damn story. Now, you have too. Y'all take care. Bye.